So what we're going to do is a quick setup of SQL Server running inside a Docker container and then connecting to it using SQL Server Management Studio. We're going to do that end to end installing all those components. In order to do this, we need to get the three components we need. The first being Docker. We can get that from getdocker.com. We need SQL Server Management Studio, or SSMS. We can get that from the SQL Server Management Studio site and download that here. We also need the actual Docker container. So if you search for SQL Docker, and go to the Microsoft SQL Server Docker Hub, you can find the commands you need to install that container. First things, we're gonna download the Docker desktop for Windows. And while we're waiting for that to finish downloading, we can install the SQL Server Management Studio I downloaded earlier. So once you kicked off the install, I'm doing this at two times speed, just in case you think it's installing really quickly on my machine. When it prompts you, feel free to choose where you want to install it. I'm going to just select the defaults. You know your machine much better than I do. Even when speeded up two times, this still takes a little while to install, and this will vary from machine to machine. And true to Microsoft form, we end up with progress bars saying they've completed, but yet we're still obviously doing something. Once these lying progress bars have finished, you should get a screen that says we've completed and we're all good. So the next part is to install Docker, so double click on the installer for that. And we get to watch another installation. Again, everything is default. If you want to change any settings, feel free. It's your machine. Once you get to the end of the installation, you have to close and log out. Make sure you've closed all your applications, saved all your work before you do this. The alternative is to just close down the installer and possibly just restart your machine. When you come back, you will find you'll get a service agreement to sign. Now be very careful. The Docker service agreement changed relatively recently for commercial use. So read this very carefully if you're using it in a workplace. If you're using it at home on your own machine for your own pleasure and enjoyment, then it's not a problem. So that's Docker installed. Now we have to get the actual SQL Server container onto our machine. And to do that, we're going to need a PowerShell terminal session. So let's open the shell. Let's copy the command. And get back to our terminal window. 
if I can find it. Paste that command in and press enter. This will pull down and install the Docker container on your machine. So, this has just downloaded the image, it hasn't done anything with it. Just to prove that, if we type in docker container and then ls to list them, this will show us a list of running containers and shows we don't have anything running at all. So the next step is to get our container up and running. So to get the instructions to do that, we need to pop back to the Docker Hub page and scroll down. Here you'll find all the commands you need to get your Docker container up and running. So I'm just going to cut and paste the first one in the list, which should be enough to start our container and get us up and running. If we go back to the terminal window and paste that in, all we've got to do then is put in a sensible password. All you have to do is remember what this password is when you're connecting using SQL Server Management Studio later. So I'm going to do the old PA55 word explanation mark which is adequate for our purposes. Please feel free to use a secure password or look at the rest of the instructions to find out better ways of doing this. We're going to map 1433 to 1433 which is the standard SQL port because I don't have SQL Server running on my local machine currently there's no conflict there. So once we're happy that we've changed everything we need to we can run that statement and it will start the container. If we now do the docker container ls again we should see that our container is now running. So let's fire up SQL Server Management Studio and see if we can actually connect to our newly brought up SQL Server in a Docker container. Once you get the prompt, you can put in the server name as localhost because we've mapped the ports directly. So 1433 on our localhost is actually pointing at our Docker container. If we change the connection type to SQL Server Authentication, type SA, and then type the password we entered when we're starting the container a second ago. That should connect and if I drag it onto the right window you can see I've now connected to a SQL Server on my local machine. Now I know that I don't have SQL Server installed on my local machine so the only logical explanation is we have actually connected to the dock container. So if I quickly create a database just to prove that it is working And you can also note that the location paths are quite clearly not Windows. They are a Linux path in var opt MSSQL data, which also confirms we are running SQL Server on a Linux box contained in a nice Docker container. So we've created a database. And that's it. Enjoy your SQL Server. <laughs>